welcome to another episode of FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff, and uh, how's it going, everyone? Happy Monday. Mondays are great. Way better than Fridays, right? Anybody? Anybody that's, uh, is this thing on? No? Okay. Sorry. Let's go, let's go. How much gain should I use on my interface when putting a guitar straight in? Sam? Is, uh, that's a great question. For most interfaces, and most, I'm, I'm generalizing, but for most, if you're using the DI, the high Z in, the little guitar jack on your interface, all the way down is unity gain, generally speaking. So you shouldn't be adding or having to add any additional gain. Your pickups are plenty hot, and that is typically going to be the most accurate if you're doing something like reamping. But like all things, do whatever sounds good. So if cranking it a little bit, uh, to use with a guitar amp sim sounds good. Eh, you know what? You're not gonna hurt anything as long as you're not in the red and clipping That's really that's really the only thing you want to work watch out for is clipping as long as you're not clipping You can do whatever you want and be consistent about it if you're recording like a song or a record or something like that You don't want your DI levels to be all over the place, but for me personally always volume input level or input boost It's a better way to think about it Input boost is all the way down for me personally. Have you fallen into gas and spending more time looking for gear rather than using your current setup? Yes. Actually, confession time, I've been doing that a lot lately with pro audio stuff because I'm gonna I'm gonna change some things over on my desk and I'm gonna take out one of the modelers, I'm gonna take out the fractal, and I want to hybrid mix again. I want some hardware. I want some outboard EQs. I want some outboard compressors. I want, uh, you know, a different mic pre coming in when I record these amps. Um, I have been just going nuts looking and listening to videos with all sorts of outboard gear, with all sorts of price ranges, and it's fun. I love that, but really, ultimately, that is distracting from, you know, me doing this as opposed to you know, just spending all day on Sweetwater or something like that. I recently purchased a 1995 Gibson Les Paul Standard for my birthday, as 1995 is the year I was born. What is your birth year guitar you would like to purchase slash own? Ooh, good question, Brian. Um, also, I'm gonna date myself, I am so old. I am 40 years old. I have always wanted to get a Gibson Les Paul Custom from 1980. And thanks to Adam Jones, all of those are through the roof and skyrocketing in price. So it's not something I am willing to afford. I do not really want to drop $6,000 on a guitar just because it's from my birth year, which is ultimately why I decided on getting something newer like this 2012 Les Paul Custom that you guys recently saw me get on this channel. I've also been looking at Gibson Les Paul standards as well, although they're not as nice as 1980. 1980 was kind of a weird year for uh, Gibson Les Pauls. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, you you find really, really nice ones that are like in mint condition, which like I've said in the past on this channel, that really makes me wonder like what's wrong with them if they haven't been played at all and like they're in totally dead mint condition or it's the other way and they're super, super beat up. But I do watch out for Gibsons from 1980 which was so long ago, that was four decades ago. I am so old and uh, excuse me while I go cry. <laughs> Least favorite guitar shape and why? Ooh, Ivan. Well, you have a little, Ivan Garcia. Thank you so much for your question, sir. Least favorite guitar shape and why? Honestly, the Gibson Modern is one of the most hideous things I have ever seen. Not even guitars. I'm talking anything. Like it, looking at that guitar and like thinking about playing it makes me want to uh, punch myself in the face amongst other things. But off the top of my head, a Gibson Modern is like, I, mm, 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 mm. I wouldn't, you could, you, I would literally turn down money to play that guitar. It's so ugly. It deserves to be burned before it breeds. That's how ugly I think that guitar is. 
What's what guitar do you guys think is the ugliest? What is what is something that just makes you go, ugh? Leave a comment down below. I want to know what guitar you guys think is the ugliest. Do you blend amps? If so, what is your process of making them play well with each other? Ooh, good question. Um, not recently. I mean, maybe I should revisit that kind of thing. Um, back in the day when I used to tour about, I don't know, play a lot of shows and tour regionally, play around all over the place. I had two Randall RG100 ES half stacks and it sounded killer. It was awesome. Very fond memories of my guitar tone back then. And I think it's called bi amping. Um, Tom Long and Jerry, Jerry Finn famously used to do this in the studio with like Blink-182 and AFI and MXPX, but he would have, he would, you know, you have three, three EQ bands, low, mid and high, and he would take half stacks and he would dial in one half stack for just the treble, one half stack for just the mid range and another half stack for the low end. And when you blend them all together or play them all at the same time, you are allowing each amplifier to work on a specific frequency range as opposed to the whole whole frequency spectrum, if that makes sense. So this way you get a lot more clarity in what you're playing. And in post, like in a recording situation, you can EQ and kind of uh, EQ the amps a little bit to get what you think sounds best. Well, I used to use two half stacks, I know not three, but two half stacks, you know, the RG100 uh, heads and two 412s, and I would dial one more bass heavy and less top endy, and then the other one more top endy and less bass heavy. And they would blend really, really well together. That way you don't get a buildup of low end frequencies or low mid frequencies. It sounded great. Um, and if anyone has the means to even attempt or try this, I highly recommend you do so. It's a great experience, but that's basically how you get them to play well with each other. At what point would you say enough is enough when it comes to geeky guitar stuff? Have you seen slash read stuff and thought that's just stupid? Miles Cookman, yes, I have. I mean, there's a few things where I'm just like, who cares? Like who, who, who cares? Clearly a lot of people do care about a lot of things. However, um, the Tonewood debate for me was pretty ridiculous, um, because it doesn't matter. Like who cares if, if you find a guitar and you want to pick a part of why it sounds good or bad, fine. But to generally say, oh, the, the wood matters or it doesn't matter. Who cares? I don't care. I want to, I want to play a sick guitar that has, you know, that feels great and sounds great. Now, if I have to have a guitar made out of ground up doorknobs to get that fine, like I, I don't care. Um, or, you know, does, is the, are you, is it the sound of the pickup and the wood doesn't matter kind of a thing, all that stuff, man, who cares? People get really upset about a, a lot of stupid stuff in my opinion. And that, that goes for non-musical stuff as well, but limit, limiting that to just the guitar world. Yeah, that was the one thing I was just like, God, I roll. And that does it for this episode of FAQ Monday. If you have a question, feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or leave a comment down below. And with that, you've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, please consider subscribing. It helps me help you. And then in turn, you get more stuff to watch. And also I have all sorts of stuff down in the description of this video, Sweetwater giveaway stuff. There's all sorts of links to all sorts of things. So consider uh, checking that out as well, if you're gonna hang. But if you don't hang, all good. I still love you.